Welcome to the RN to Writer Show. My name's Elizabeth Haynes, and I'm a nurse who built a successful freelance writing business. And today I teach other nurses how to do the same damn thing. <laughs> Being a little irreverent there, we're taping this right after Christmas. So maybe I'm feeling like relaxed after the holiday break, I don't know. Anyway, our guest today is Nurse Liz George. She believes storytelling is integral to health and well-being, me too, because it is how we shape and make sense of our world. Liz's goal is always to prevent, present, prevent, present scientific information in a way that's factual, accessible, and engaging. Liz has a Bachelor of Science degree in holistic nursing and is a certified public health nurse and lactation consultant. She uses this background and experience to provide family health and wellness information because families have the potential to change the world and create a better future for everyone. You can find Nurse Liz at nurselizgeorge.com. Welcome, Liz. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Beth. I'm so glad you're, you're offering this opportunity. Absolutely. And well, since you say that, let's tell everybody else, you can be on the show too. Anybody watching this and who is a nurse who is or wants to be a writer can be on this show. Just email hello at rntowriter.com. We'll get you scheduled. So what are we talking about today, Liz? What, what, what kind of coaching are we doing today? I am really interested in personal branding. I just feel like that's where it is for millennials. You know, they, they're, they're not really that interested in the business. They're interested in their connection. It has to be personal. There has to be a little bit of emotion. There has to be like a reason behind it. It's not just a cool logo. It's who is that person behind that logo. And so I'm, I'm a little lost. I'm a little confused. How do I, how do I create that? Does that mean that I have to do my business website and a personal website? Do I have to keep up with like some kind of a Facebook thing or Instagram? I mean, what I'm doing now is LinkedIn and my website and sending LOIs and, and um, pitching articles. Um, I published a few articles. In my job, I actually write all the time. And I publish a newsletter every week. That's sort of a B2B part of what I do for a living right now. Um, but I want to move away from my job. I want to be self-employed. I want to be, um, I, I want to be more writing and, um, and less administration. <laughs> and so um, I'm really looking forward to retiring from my day job as a public health nurse and moving into 100% writing all the time. And I like content writing. I like writing articles. I got a book in me, maybe two. And I just can't wait to move on. But I want to make sure that I position myself so that so that I am in it for the long haul, um, so that I've created something that is going to move with me for a long, long time to come. How's that? <laughs> awesome. That's, that gives us so much to talk about. Oh, good. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So the first thing that I think a lot of nurse writers grapple with when it comes to their branding is they, they have they don't have clarity about who their audience is. Mm -hmm. So if when a person and, and your um, situation, by the way, is a little more complicated and I'll come back to that in a minute because you said you, you wanna be a working writer but you also have books in you, yeah. which is awesome but that's two different things. And so mm -hmm. that can cause confusion with the branding. Okay. So the first thing that I tell nurses is, if your first goal is to be a working writer, like if you're if you want to make money from this and sell articles and do content writing, then your branding relates to your target client. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is picture my number one ideal target client. OK, and that is not the same as their target client. 
Right. So in other words, you may want to produce content for this organization and their content may target millennials, but that doesn't mean your branding should have anything to do with appealing to millennials. Your branding has to resonate with this target client. Right. Number one. Okay. Um, now, the number two thing, though, that complicates things with you because you'd like to also be an author and a recognized subject matter expert in materials that presumably um, do target millennials mm -hmm. and families, because that's what you like to do. Um, that needs to be a separate piece of your branding because okay. that's a whole other different ball of wax when a person wants to be an author. And I have known Many freelance writers, working freelance writers who subsequently went on to author books. Of course, the best example is my friend Jenny Fink, who does the Building Boys stuff. Yeah. Uh, she was my very first podcast guest. For those who are just catching up, you can go uh, watch that episode and learn more about Jenny. But that evolved from her working writer work. And you can take that same path. But then her branding as a subject matter expert in raising boys and becoming an author and having a podcast and being interviewed for her expertise, that came later down the line. And that, for her, involved a whole separate branding with a separate website, which may be what you want to do too. But because that part might be further down the line, you might want to just table that for the moment and focus on one thing, which is like the working writer branding we were just talking about. Yeah. That what makes are your thoughts on that? that? That actually makes a lot of sense. And so that's what I've been doing to date um, with my, my website and LinkedIn is, is trying to appeal to the content marketing companies mm -hmm. um, and also maybe to businesses who might be needing content. Um, so so that's where I've been so far. Um, yeah, that's exactly correct. Okay. So it sounds like you are doing all of that correctly. Now, like I say, what I find helpful is to picture my number one dream target client and slant all of my website materials and so to speak my branding to that client for example we do that here with our interwriter as well our number one target client is nurses but we also attract a lot of non-nurse clinicians and people in healthcare. but we don't focus our branding and marketing for them because mm -hmm. They're um, extra, you could say, to our target core audience, which is nurses. And that's the approach that I often advise writers to take. Keeping in mind, I do not consider myself a personal branding expert. So this is just stuff that I did in my career and it worked out pretty well. So yeah. <laughs> it's worked out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it worked out good. <laughs> so what aspects of your branding that you're doing right now do you think could be improved or let's put it this way how are your branding elements or your inbound marketing elements like your website how are they performing um I, i'm i'm definitely I, I have no idea how my website is performing, honestly. Um, I haven't really looked at the metrics real closely to see who's looking at my website, but I know some people are looking at my website and I figure they're probably coming from LinkedIn um, because on LinkedIn, things are going fairly well. Um, I did um, one blog post on my website, which I also um, put on LinkedIn, and I meant for it to be appealing to content marketing people um, or maybe to physicians because it was really about how how millennials are kind of viewing um, their health care these days and I really that like millennial family health is my niche I mean that's where mm -hmm. I want to be um, but if I think about my like ideal client like who would I really like to work for 
Mm, I'd like to work. I, I would like to do content marketing for like a naturopathic group. Um, a oh one of, one of those um, companies that sends you healthy meals in the mail. Um, maybe a, a, a vitamin, natural vitamin company. I mean, I, I want to write the stuff for those millennial families who want to be healthy. And I have the perfect background for it. You know, I'm, I'm, I actually have the right experience and I have the right education to be able to, you know, separate, can I say the bullshit from what's real and offer real, you know, actual health truth and, and advice for families. Um, so yeah, what company I can't like come up with a name of a company, but I think that style of business would make me super happy. Oh yeah. And see, just in this conversation, we went from, I'm, I'm kind of targeting, you know, places that might need content writing to very specific, you know, naturopathic company, one of these fresh meal kit delivery places. And that's the exact kind of specificity I think you need to think in when it comes to marketing in general. Um, now, I will say this also is you had commented, you know, um, you have the perfect background to communicate to the millennial audiences who want to be healthy like you can, um, I think, you know, deliver content that is factual and sourced in, you know, studies and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, and this is a fascinating thing to me. Um, because I see this a lot in the coaching groups. As nurses, we are trained and it is ingrained in us to think in terms of nursing goals, mm -hmm. nursing goals for people. Yeah. Okay. The clients that we write for don't give a crap about nursing goals. Yeah. <laughs> right. They, they are not publishing this content from some altruistic notion that they want people to be healthy and they're going to show them the way necessarily. Now, that can be a component. So it's better to think in terms of marketing goals okay. because that's why clients hire us is to help them achieve their marketing goals. So let's think about one of these um, meal kit delivery type companies. Okay. I have never worked with one. I have no inside information about their marketing goals, but I think we can assume that a big marketing goal for them might be to increase sales. Mm -hmm. And a sub goal of that may be to increase sales among millennials. So from that standpoint, you're spot on that that would be a great type of company to approach. Mm -hmm. Now, their marketing goal for millennials though might not be here's how to keep you healthier it might be here's the convenient way to you know wh what are the millennial family pain points around meal time well again you know that audience better than i do but i'm thinking a couple of pain points could be unlike my generation where women all pretty much all of us were taught to cook mm -hmm. Um, maybe not all of us, but a large percentage of boomer women like me, we grew up understanding we should cook for our family and that's what we learned to do. I'm not sure that's true for millennial women or men. Mm -hmm. So a pain point for these millennial families might be, I don't know how to cook and I'm not even interested in cooking. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for a company like this? Well, then they one of their marketing goals might be to increase subscriptions by hammering how you don't need that knowledge right. and you can eat healthy, you know, because we provide it all. Yep. But again, the health part of this might not even be on their radar for a marketing goal. So when you approach companies like this, and this isn't just for you, Liz, this is for all the nurses in the audience listening and watching you need to be careful when you approach these companies not to um, not to prioritize your 
health knowledge in terms of this is what your audience wants. We're going to tell them how to be healthy. You need to prioritize your knowledge and expertise as it pertains to their hypothetical marketing goals. So saying in an LOI something like, if one of your goals is to emphasize how people can, how millennials can eat healthy by subscribing to your meal kit, then I'm the person who can make that case for you. Mm-hmm. But regardless, I can help you meet your other marketing goals too, because I know this audience well, and I can create messaging that resonates with them and increases your subscriber base. Because mm-hmm. like those are going to be the core marketing goals for them is increasing sales, right? So I guess that is, that's, that's where I'm, I, I do kind of slip up. And I think from other podcasts that I've listened to, I feel like that's a really hard part for us nurses because yeah, my bottom line is, oh, MG, I love these millennials. They're so dang smart. They like science. They care about the world. You know, they, 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 they're so, they're so into equity, like way beyond any of the other generations. And so for me, I'm like, I want to talk to these people because you know what? I really love them, but I have to sell the, the marketing company, not the millennial. I mean, I need to sell the millennial once I get in there, but first I have to sell the marketing company. You know, if I'm not meeting their need, then I can't meet the needs of them, of their client. So, mm, okay. Right. Exactly. And keeping in mind that your, um, your role as, let's say, a content writer, mm-hmm. um, your role in educating or reaching or engaging with the client's target audience is only driven by the client. Yeah. Your, your primary goal is, in fact, not that. Your primary goal is writing the content to the specifications that the client provides for whatever audience the client wants to reach. Yeah. Yeah. So in whatever terms they of, want to say today. <laughs> yeah. Right. In terms of being a working writer, that's our role. Yeah. We don't, we don't get to, you know, and companies, they often have buyer personas. So mm-hmm. they segment their audience and they yeah. produce different types of content for their different audience segments. We as the writer don't get to choose the audience. So yeah. the first thing that I would say to you is to let go of the idea that you love millennials and you want to communicate with them because uh-huh. that has no bearing in a certain way on being a successful content writer. Right. It can be more so on the journalism side, which you mentioned you were pitching articles. Uh-huh. You know, it's, It's easier to identify publications that clearly are aimed at millennials and then pitch articles that way. So that might be where you get that fulfillment Mm -hmm. on the content side for you. It may be more about I need to brand myself as number one, a competent writer who, yes, specializes in the millennial audience. That's a good that's a good one to have a niche. Um, But make it clear that you're all about helping the client achieve their marketing goals, whatever those goals may be. Like, Uh don't come in with an agenda of, I want to work with millennials and educate them because they're so fascinating and they love science. Let's get the science to them. Clients don't want a writer who's going to try and set their marketing agenda. Right. They've already got that. So it's more important to, to, you know, be the person who goes along. Yeah. You know, whatever you want me to write, uh, I'm here to write it. However you want me to write it, that's how I'll write it, you know? Thanks. So then how do I get my personality into my website to be interesting, (laughs) Um, to be, to be interesting when a potential client, you know, gets my LOI and, and, and clicks to look at my website. So yeah, can we look can we look at it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Share your screen. Okay. Well, let okay. me ask you this. Is a, okay. Does a potential client want someone who's interesting? Is that an attribute they're looking for in a content writer? Um, I guess I feel like they want to know that somebody is competent, that, that they can do the work. I, I think they want to know for sure that somebody's going to complete the work, that they're not going to get stuck. Um, I think they want somebody who's 
professional, but maybe they, they also kind of want somebody who's approachable, you know, not to not. Uh, Fair enough. I mean, not a, yeah, <laughs> I was going to swear a little, but I'm not going to, cause you did that so well. And I don't know. <laughs> All I try right, to tone see. it down here on YouTube because it could be found <laughs> by youngsters. You know, yeah. it could be found by people under 50. And I would yeah. not <laughs> go right. ahead and share your screen. Okay. Let's look at it. You're Let's being brave. I it. love that. I um that was what I said when I when I applied to be on your podcast. That my first line was, I want to be brave. I want to do it. Okay. Are you looking at my website? Yeah. It's okay, pretty. Cool. I love the design already. Um, trying to reach families and clinicians. I like that. That's a that's a very decent value proposition, sort of. It's like this is my niche. I'm putting it out there in the beginning. Okay. I'm kind of thinking that what I've said here under newsletters maybe needs to be rewritten. Um, how can you reach millennial families with health information they want to read that will increase your brand awareness and loyalty? Or maybe I don't because that is what I want to do is, is increase a client's brand awareness and loyalty. Yeah, I actually think that's quite good. The only thing is, so I'm going to drop this in and everybody watching and listening can go look up Betteridge's Law of Headlines. I am in Betteridge's court about not using questions, even though oh. they're better today. Okay. I think I think where you have an opportunity here is to strengthen this by here's what you were talking about. Where can I put in my personality? You can be audacious here. Okay. And instead of asking a question, you can say, I can help you reach millennial families with health information they want to read that will increase your brand awareness and loyalty in awesome. that group. Okay. Like, that is a bold statement, right? I can do this for you. It's a, right? it's, a, it's a really bold statement. And I think I was stuck somewhere between, you know, I don't want to sound like a jerk. I mean, you know, I, I want to sound like I'm competent, but I'm not a jerk. See, that is a real woman thing. It is, isn't it? Yeah. If this was a man's website, he wouldn't be saying that. Uh -uh, you're right. Oh, that's very insightful. Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you something that one of the best performing headlines I ever had on my website that I had more inbound leads. My headline said, I do one thing and I do it exceptionally well. Mm. I write health content yeah. for major brands. I think I said. And coming from a woman to say, I do something exceptionally well, I think people were like, wow, that's like Refreshing. over the top confidence there. Let's yeah. see, you know, is she blowing smoke or I don't know. So yeah. I think women should be more audacious. So, and again, you can do okay. the same thing for each of these where you have for questions, question. okay. reposition it as a, this is what I can do for you. Awesome. Now you do want to look and see, you know, are you touching on the, prospective clients pain points well I think in the one where you in the first one with newsletters that I think that is a good one that touches on a pain point that maybe the person reading your site maybe they are struggling with how do we reach millennials with information they want to read you know we don't know let's look at the blog one do your clients want to read smart entertaining concise blogs yeah, that one for sure, you should rewrite it from a question to here's what I can do. Okay. Um, I wouldn't, I would not presume, like I would not rewrite this to say your clients want to read smart, entertaining, concise blogs. Because again, that's too presumptuous. Like we don't know their client. We don't even know. Uh -huh. um, but you could rewrite that to say something like, I can produce smart, entertaining, and concise blog posts for you that incorporate cutting edge science in an accessible package yeah. that solidifies brand loyalty or something like that. Although you just said that in the newsletter one. But again, think about what might be their marketing goal for blogs, solidify brand loyalty or raise awareness, thinking about the sales funnel, you know, mm -hmm. um, awareness, information decision-making action. Uh, 
you know, think about where blogs might be, and then you can think about what pain points, what struggle they might have. Okay. And then in the content marketing, um, the content marketing one, you have an opportunity to showcase your expertise by saying something like, by differentiating the new generation family from the others that have gone before. And I don't know what that would entail. So I'm just going to make something up. You could say something like the new generation family wants X, Y, and Z in terms of appealing content. And that's exactly what I can produce for this audience for you. Awesome. Because you're the one, you're the expert who knows this audience, you know, and then especially on that, if you have like a content marketing page, you can cite research that supports yeah. what you said on the homepage, you know, so research that's shows. What I'm trying to do down here on my blog. So, um, yeah. Oh, whoops. So, uh, okay. So th this was just like really simple. And um, this is my, what I think of as my street cred for like, okay. This is, okay. And then I, uh, my blog is who are these millenni millennials and why should healthcare providers care? So like, you know, why do you need to know them in order mm -hmm. to reach them? You know, why would you care who they are? Exactly. That's my, that was my idea. There. I think that's, that's really good. Um, and the one tiny thing that I would say is, um, it's another question headline. Uh, oh, I would, stop that. <laughs> okay. I would, okay. I, would put, I think that I would put something like, you, you can be more intriguing. This is my point. You can say something like research shows that millennials want these five key things from healthcare providers. Ooh, yeah. And then people are like, wait, what is that? So then they click oh. through, you know? Okay. okay. Yes. Oh, but can't... this is a very good website, Liz. Okay, good. Okay. I mean, these are all minor unsolicited criticisms that <laughs> I'm offering you because this is all in general, very well written and awesome. copywriting is hard. Okay. Um, so that was the other, you know, thing for me is like, people are going to look at this. They're going to know I wrote it. And this is an example of how I write. So it better be pretty damn good. Right. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but like I say, okay. copywriting is hard. Um, I would be remiss if I did not put in a plug for, our interwriter daily to say, we're actually going to cover some like co how to do copywriting for your own website and stuff so that you don't oh. have to become oh. a copywriter, which is hard, but you can yeah. learn it. People can learn enough to do it well. Awesome. Um, my about me is pretty much um, the intro that you wrote or that you read Um I, I also just put in there something personal and I didn't know what to put in there, but I mean, I think it's great to put something personal on your about page. As I've said many times, I once got a client simply because they saw on my about page that we had the same basic breed of dog. And so they, and that was enough. And they reached out and we talked and then I ended up signing them as a client. So you can never tell. Yeah. I will say that um, nurses should not miss an opportunity to sell on their about page because we do not control how people enter our site. Right. Like depending on what search phrases they use, our homepage may not be our highest ranked page on Google. It could be our about page. And so that's the first page that a prospective client sees so even in the about information, it pays to think in terms of what value do, does what I'm telling the client bring to them. That was a mouthful. So like I'm telling my story, but I still need to have this context of why that delivers value to okay. the person reading this. Okay. So that's just something to think about. Okay. That's not a critique of your about page at all. That's just in general. I appreciate your bravery so much because so many people are going to learn a lot from this. And, and I learned um, a lot. I appreciate that. I'm glad. So 
again, I want to thank you, Liz, for coming on and uh, sharing your website and letting us talk about all these great topics. Um, to the audience, I want to thank you for tuning in again, listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or watching us on YouTube. Please hit the subscribe button. Please, if you're on Apple Podcasts, go leave us a rating. I think that's all they do is a rating. Um, if you want to be on the show, email hello at rntowriter.com and we'll see you next time. <laughs>